If you're already familiar with wrap boxes, you might be using those to set up your grids in your UI because they are responsive and they change how they wrap around and how they produce the grid dynamically. But sometimes you just want to set up a pretty hard coded grid saying we have an X and a Y coordinate and I can put widgets into those specific X and specific Y coordinates. I don't want to do any like weird wrapping because while this is dynamic and responsive, it also makes a layout of things rather unpredictable because this is just a one dimensional array that the widgets displace in any way that it can. Sometimes you do want to have a final grain control over what you want to do. And for those, we have the grid panels. So we have a grid panel and a uniform grid panel. And the main difference between the two of them is that this one is uniform, go figure. So let's put both of them actually into this widget to see how they function. I'm going to put the normal one on top and then the uniform one on the bottom. So let's put in just an image like we have been doing for most of the examples in this UI series. And this image is going to go in slots, row and column, zero, zero. So this is just two arrays. You can think of this as a vertical box that has a bunch of horizontal boxes inside of it all pre-set up for you so if we uh, copy over this image for instance these will both now exist in the zero zero coordinates so if i set this to row number one you can see that it moves down and with these grid panels we actually have these built-in little widgets that can let you move these around but you will see that even though i am trying to like increase the row and here you can see the row number increasing it isn't actually moving because row one two three four five six seven eight and nine right now are empty so they don't actually take up any space if i copy over this image again and i uh make this go down you can see now row one has something in it if i set this to render at a size of 100 by 100 now this row is, well, 100 by 100, as will this column be. But this thing over here, existing in column 2 and row 10, isn't aligned with this thing that is much bigger, so it still maintains its own size. And that is where we get into the difference between a grid panel and a uniform grid panel. Now, if we go over to this uniform grid panel, it initially will be uh, a little bit weird in the way that it uh, will present itself. But if we put in an image into this and i just set this for demonstration purposes to horizontal and vertical fill it will fill the entire thing because it's only got the one cell that's actually being filled out so it's filling out the entire thing but if i put in another image uh with it and say that this one uh, needs to exist under it you can see that it tries to keep all of these cells the exact same size so since we only have this one column it still has the cells being the width of the entire widget that we have here, which we can just like, we can make this widget as big or as small as we want. But since we have two things on top of each other, we have two rows, so it makes each cell in this column the exact same size. So we can set this to fill horizontally, sure, fill vertically as well. The cell size is going to be decided by the biggest element in there. So if we add something else, let's add a button. Uh, for instance to this and I want to move that over here you can see that it tries to now make these cells such that they form themselves into a shape where they divide evenly between the amount of columns and rows that we have meaning that if I move this around it does actually make these new empty columns when I move this further and further to the right unlike this normal grid panel which will add the columns but since they are entirely empty it's not actually gonna like show it moving so this uniform grid panel in a lot of ways feels like it probably works a little bit more intuitively especially if you're going to work with blank space but it also much like the wrap box because it is doing stuff for you sometimes that does mean it deals with things in unintended ways which means that just doing it with a normal grid panel might actually be preferable. For both of these, you can also, of course, add things dynamically. You just need to make sure that they are set to being variable. And then coming into your event graph, uh, we can get the uniform grid panel and the grid panel. And you can just add a child to grid. 
and there you can give in your content any which that you want and you can give in the exact coordinate of you where you want to add those things so the row and the column that i want to add things to again if you're doing this for like an inventory or whatever you can say my inventory has a width of five and a height of 10 so i have 50 slots in total and i'm going to populate them like this instead of with a wrap box and you very easily still can just take an array and go through it linearly and put those things in uh, here so what you could do there just to show you real quick as an example array it can be booleans it doesn't really matter what we do <laughs> honestly i will make an array here and i'll give that uh, a handful of elements it doesn't really matter what their values are i'm going to go for 25 elements so that's a five by five grid and then on pre-construct which we have somewhere around here surely maybe maybe not pre-construct uh, i'm going to for each loop over this array well first i'm going to clear all children out of this grid panel and then i will for each loop over this so for each and what we can do we're going to want to fill this from the top left going to the right and then wrapping back around right so we first want to give in which column we go into and then which row we modulo this by five so this is going to divide by five and give us the remainder and then the row we just do a clean uh division also by five and for that we'll just make a construct object from class i'm just going to do like a text or something which is somewhere in here surely there we go text <laughs> found it there's a lot of things that have the word text in it because texture obviously also has text in it so it's hard to find and then we'll uh, set the text in that to be equal to our array index and that is what we'll be adding here uh, to our grid so now it should take an array and fill that out in our grid automatically which it does do so you can see it does zero one two three uh four and then it wraps around to five six seven eight nine and all of these have their own proper coordinates of course we could then uh set the padding for everything a little bit uh, and just set it to like five on each side or something like that so that they're just a little bit further apart so that they're a bit more readable but that way you can still take a one-dimensional array and put it into a grid uh, and have the grid actually function a little bit more like constrained as a grid instead of using a wrap box and a very big thank you to all my patrons you can see them on screen right now if you want to help support the channel or get any of the project files in any of my tutorials there's a link down below to the patreon page to support me or alternatively as a youtube member and a huge thank you to my cave big brain tier supporters which care more for coding than impulse control earl monsville erno my cave students tier supporters oiku and my cave digger tier supporters Mauricio Ferrias.